So this is the day after range, uh, a range visit with the Bull Armory SAS2 Ultralight 3.25 inch, you can see it right there. So we're gonna call it a UL going forward. Um, but uh, I went to the range yesterday evening and I shot close to 200 rounds out of the gun. Um, I shot a multitude of ammo. Um, I'm looking at the back of, I have notes on behind my uh, my range uh, targets here. So I shot Winchester silver tip at self-defense ammo uh, in both 115 and 147 grain variants. I shot Inceptor ARX, which is 65 grain, very light for caliber. Um, it's also not jacketed hollow point. It's more like FMJ, but it's a uh, it's like a um, the projectile is made uh, from uh, copper and and polymer, so it's a composite. Um, I also shot some regular Fiocchi 115 grain uh, um, FMJ. Um, what else? Let me see. I shot 100 rounds of Federal High Shock JHP. Um, that is considered a, a self defense ammo. Uh, I would not carry that as self defense ammo though. Um, looking at the the way uh i guess there's been people who have uh, gel tested those on on the internet and uh they typically don't do well in gel uh the same with the silver tip actually but i was testing more along the lines of if i could get this gun to choke on jhp uh so I shot maybe, let me see, I shot five mags first, all of uh, the Federal High Shock at seven, seven yards. I had two failure to uh, feeds out of that ammo. Um, and that was it for the whole, that was it for the whole uh, of the range visit. Uh, so it did choke on the poly case, but I expected that uh, because that's life or caliber. So sometimes uh, that ammo doesn't generate enough energy to move the slide back enough to feed the next uh, round. Uh, that's well known. Uh, but I just wanted to check and see if it would choke. And I shot, I shot 25 of those and it choked maybe three times. Uh, not bad. So I, I, I'm not counting the poly case, but out of 175 rounds, two of the high shocks didn't feed. In my opinion, that's pretty good. That's a less than a 2% failure rate. And I know that um, 175 rounds isn't a lot of ammo, uh, isn't a lot of rounds, but almost all of that a good majority of that was uh self-defense ammo and uh i'm not gonna go about trying to prove people to people that uh this gun doesn't have issues uh by spending uh tons of money out of my own pocket to buy jhp uh if you feel that you can do a better job with by spending you know more ammo and, and, and conducting a review, uh, be my guest. Um, I'm not doing that. So uh, so there it is. Um, so here is the, uh, the target for yesterday's, one of the targets, the first target. Um, it's pretty good, seven yards. Uh, the groupings are actually pretty good for me. Um, the gun was not snappy. Um, it's a small gun it's a light gun um, so when I say snappy it's not snappy like you would expect it to be um, going from a, a five inch 
1911 that's all steel to this uh, yeah people might call that snappy but if you compare it with the I, I've seen people compare it with the 365 uh, XL the 355 uh, 365X the Hellcats and compared to those guns this this one is magic um, I, I didn't have any problems last night with with uh, controlling the gun um, it got snappier as I moved up in uh in in, in. so I would, when I started shooting the more expensive ammo like the silver tips uh, the 147 grain was yeah that made me uh that was that shocked me how how strong it was but uh um, and that's something I've shot out of my my current carry gun which is a commander sized uh, 1911 all steel uh, and I didn't feel the same with that gun as I did with this but that's not a fault of the gun as as you shoot any hot ammo you're, you're gonna you're gonna see things like that um, so I mean it, guns can't defy physics um, but I would say this gun is close to doing that because uh, again even though I felt a lot of that recoil especially from the silver tips um, in fact uh, the uh, Inceptor was pretty hot as well um, I, I was still able to control where I was hitting at so um, I then move this to nine yards and in my opinion that's pretty damn good um, with this one this was the uh, Inceptor I'm looking on the back here this is silver tip uh, this is regular Fiocchi uh, 115 grain FMJ um, this is both uh, Fiocchi and Federal uh, High Shock this one is my camera's going to get to die soon we'll keep going until uh, it cuts off and we'll switch batteries I shot this I started out shooting it at 15 yards and I moved it up to 10 uh, wasn't able to start hitting in the middle until I moved it back to 10 uh, it was on the tail end of my uh, range trip and with me trying to control the gun uh, they say that if you don't go to a, the range and come back with your forearms and 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 wrists and hands somewhat uh, fatigued then you're not doing you're not doing it right and every time I go to the range the I shoot like I shoot really well at the beginning and toward the end I start kind of faltering and that's because my arm and hand strength uh, you know I'm not I don't have the best strength um, but uh, in, in controlling the gun and especially when I'm using my left hand my strong side is right my right side uh, so me having to tighten down on the gun with my left hand uh, yeah it does fatigue me but uh, in my opinion that's not all that bad I mean I still hit paper and I don't believe this I thought this was designed to be shooting at at the longer distances anyways which is why I I used it because I wanted to be able to s try and see where I was aiming at and even at 15 yards in that dark uh, indoor range I could barely see I could barely see this part um, so I didn't talk about the trigger last time we uh, so the trigger I, I did a three pull uh, average with my trigger gauge gauge and um, I averaged out at two pounds 14 ounces yeah, a little bit light it's a it's a very nice trigger um, I didn't have any issues with the ammo or the shooting or any hang-ups um, I think a lot of people who complain about the gun having a uh, feed issues and things like that 
in my honest opinion, um, a lot of it might have to do with um, uh, limp, wrist, limp wristing. Uh, and I say that, say that having uh, experienced limp, wrist, limp wristing before um, and thinking that it was the gun because I know better and I've been shooting long enough to kind of know when I'm limp wristing or not. And you know what? Um, the whole reason I, I knew that I was limp wristing was because of the camera. I wear this camera sometimes to the range as a training aid so that I, you know, I'm, I'm too busy focused on shooting, but it's a second set of eyes for me. So when I get home, when I'm having issues with a particular gun, I look at the footage and I've caught myself kind of doing things with the camera before, such as flinching. Uh, I have caught myself limp wristing before. Um, I've caught myself slapping the trigger. Um, I've caught myself pulling you know, the gun when I pull the trigger to, you know, I'm pulling it off, off of where I need to shoot, uh, all sorts of things. Uh, so, you know, sometimes it is the person behind the gun, even though you think it's not. Uh, I mean, I went to the range and I even shot 147, which is not really recommended by Bull Armory because of the, the overall length of the, uh, of the projectile sometimes that they think it might give uh, feet issues with this particular gun um, I shot 147 grain I didn't have any issues out of all of the 25 boxed ammo the what I call the legit self-defense ammo such as the uh, the silver tips and the Inceptor ARX's um, out of all of those, that ammo, n n none of those rounds choked in the gun. It was only the high shocks, which again is like, it could have been, maybe it was me. Uh, I doubt it was me because that, that ammo is rather shitty in the first place. Um, I use it as training ammo. Um, but really, that it, it was a really nice range visit. I want to get more ammo um, today. I, I might go shooting, if not today, definitely tomorrow. Um, but I want to go to Cabela's first and buy some some premium ammo, uh, either uh, gold and saber. I want to buy at least fifty to seventy-five bo uh, boxes worth of that. Um, Horny Hornady Critical Duty or Critical Defense, or uh, federal HST or any of the variants uh, so those three right there and I want to I want to shoot a bunch of it through the gun because at first I was gonna wait until 500 uh, rounds have been shot through the gun but I'm not having any issues with it um, and if that's the case we'll do one more run with some really nice ammo that I could actually you know trust uh, and uh, not only that um, it's very those those brands that I mentioned are very uh, they have a good reputation uh, they're used by law enforcement as well uh, so I'll, I'll try that and then I'll start carrying that ammo if it if everything if everything turns out well uh, I'll start carrying that ammo with this gun the gun is dirty I haven't cleaned it since the range like, again it's only 175 rounds um, Yes, it is. Uh, it is empty, by the way. There's no magazine. I'm not you're not going to be able to pick up the how dirty it is. I'm trying to angle that camera, uh, the gun, so that you can see down the in the chamber. It is dirty. Another good thing about this gun that makes people cringe, but if you look the uh, extractor is protected there's a little space back there and I found that out when uh, Graham Bates of GB Guns actually pointed that out in one of his videos so if I open this back up let me see here I'm trying to do this 
yeah you're not going to see it so if i open that up right here you can see the little space on the back of the barrel where they you know that they honed out to give uh the extractor which is right there a little bit of space so that it, so that it doesn't slam into the uh the barrel but yeah i'm loving the gun so far no issues whatsoever and that is it